It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today we have a question from Stephen, who has been practicing Dutch kickboxing, wrestling, and Muay Thai for a while. Feels like he's a fairly competent fighter, and he had a bit of an altercation this Christmas with a relative. I won't read the whole email because it's it's quite long and detailed. And yeah, man. So it turned out one of the relatives at this family gathering during Christmas time got drunk and got violent, got out of hand, picked up a big stick and tried to attack one of the children there. And Stephen put himself between this uh, attacker and the child and used some of his, his Muay Thai skills, a long guard specifically, to keep the attacker from hitting the child. The child was able to get away unscathed, but the police came, some arrests were made, uh, our friend Stephen managed to get off with no charges since he was acting purely in self-defense. And yeah, but afterward, he says this, the point of my message is, throughout this entire onslaught or barbaric attack on myself, had I not been patient enough, I could have landed any shot I wanted and ended it right there and then. A drunk, even with a weapon, wasn't much trouble because my coat and the extra layers were acting as armor and took the sting out of the blows. Along with my reflexes, I've learned over the years to keep myself protected. However, I didn't land those blows despite the opportunity being present, because while I valued the safety of the child and she got away safely, I also, daft as it sounds, value, I valued the safety of the attacker. Well, of course, he's, she's part of your family. Of course, I, I, I get that. If it's some random dude on the streets attacking a, a family member of yours with a stick, of course, you're going to lay him out flat and nobody is going to question that. But if it's a family member, someone, someone you love and care about and in other circumstances maybe even respect when they're sober and not attacking people with sticks, yeah, I, I understand that. It's, it's not the same. It's, it's very similar to the, the concept of women's self-defense, specifically when they talk about defending against a rapist, because you, you have to look at the situation where most rapes occur. It's not random strangers jumping out of the shadows, attacking women and dragging them into vans. Okay, that has happened, but it's the minority of rape cases. Most of the time, it's people that those women know, often people those women trust. Sometimes, often, it's a romantic partner. And if it's someone you love, if your boyfriend is attacking you, for example, it's going to be a whole lot harder to gouge his eyes out than it would be if it was just some random stranger on the street. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that almost every self defense video on rape prevention gets wrong right there is the assumption that it's somebody that you don't know or care about. So this is a complex situation. I, I understand where you're coming from and you don't want to lay your family member out flat with the right cross. I get it. He goes on to say, now that's just some backstory to the whole thing. If you feature this topic, you don't need to include it. Okay, that's why we skipped over most of it. I went into a lot there. I know that my main point and something that I don't think is talked about often by many YouTubers is the idea that defending yourself against family members and also self-defense without injuring the attacker and the legal situation, what the legal situation is, can put you in or save you from... Okay, uh, yeah, I, I get what you're talking about. So again, it's a complex situation because it is a family member, but it's also, there are also legal ramifications here, right? I'm not sure what, what country you live in, but whatever the self-defense laws were, uh, mandated that you, you got out of jail, you didn't spend the night in jail, you weren't charged because you were acting in self-defense, you didn't hit the guy as far as I could tell from your letter, and so it was okay. Now... When I first read this letter, I was thinking, you were asking, what's the best way to uh, subdue somebody without hurting them? And my immediate go-to answer was grappling. Why? Because you can choke a guy out, 
choke him unconscious without hurting him. You can clinch up with someone, especially if they have a big long stick or something like that, and negate the power of them swinging that stick. You might get hit on the way in, though. That's a possibility. But at the same time, you ask about the legal ramifications. In some places, choking somebody out is a felony and you're going to end up in prison. In some places, it's not. So, self-defense is a legal term. I say this many times on this channel, it's a legal term. If you don't understand the self-defense laws where you live, in your country, in your state, in your province, in your city, you know, whichever political entity writes those self-defense laws, you don't understand self-defense. So that's step number one of learning self-defense. Learn the law. Is it okay, according to law, if a violent person with a stick comes out there to clinch up with them and strangle them unconscious? Are you going to go to prison for that? Is it okay to punch them in the chin and knock them out? Will you go to prison for that? And of course, at the same time, we have the extra layer of nuance there. This is a family member at a family gathering. I don't know the relationship. Maybe it was a brother. Maybe it was a cousin. Maybe it was an uncle. Maybe it was your crazy aunt. I don't know. But if you punch this person out, <laughs> there's going to create problems, not just between you and them, but between the rest of the family. This is complicated, right? Self-defense is not always so simple as punch him in the groin and run away. Or do your special ninja move and, and then you're out of there. Problem solved. No, man. It's a legal term and it's a personal issue. Most violent altercations, not just as far as rape goes, like date rape goes, but most violent altercations in general happen between people who know each other. And that's why I often say most violent altercations, most street fights are avoidable because you know each other. That fight is happening because of an intrapersonal conflict that already existed before that fight ever happened, that could have been resolved before that fight ever happened. So, as far as practical utility of techniques, grappling, strangulation, rear naked choke would probably be the most bang for your buck as far as not injuring the other person, keeping yourself and others safe. But again, in some places, that could land you in prison. So study your self-defense laws where you live. I hope everything's copacetic with your family, my friend. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train. NogiBJJGear.com is now XMarshall.com, serving your needs beyond just Nogi Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now find brand new equipment for mixed martial arts, kickboxing, Muay Thai, wrestling, and more at XMarshall.com. As always, use my code RAMSEY10 for 10% off everything on the website. Once again, that's XMarshall.com.